Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Monday. I hope everyone is ready for the week, and we are going to look at some kick-ass art today. So we're going to look at Hiroki Samura's Blade of the Immortal. Oh my god, I'm excited. So, let's just get into this. I'll jibber-jabber as the video goes along. So this is the cover for the book that we're going through. Uh, I started collecting Blade of the Immortal, I, I believe, right when it started coming out. Um... For people that are new to my channel, uh, I'm a professional comic book artist, but uh, when I would go to the comic book store and collect my comics um, on like Wednesdays, I always, always, always would flip through any new book that came out. So I look through everything, um, and then generally I'll, I'll buy any book that looks good to me. And so when Blade of the Mortal first dropped, the first, I'm, I'm nearly sure it was a, in comic book form. I don't think it was the collected ones. Um, I flipped through it and I was like, wow, this is really cool and really different. And it was, I was already into these um, types of looks from some stuff I had seen online, uh, books that I had been exposed to, uh, anime that I had seen. And um, this was one of the first, uh, I guess, easily accessible comics that I could get that looked pretty authentic manga there was an asian bookstore that i would go to um it was a, it was a, like a library funny enough i mean it wasn't it wasn't a library but it was a store that it was almost like um a, a blockbuster for um japanese people i guess and uh, they would rent uh, manga but you could also buy them like if it was something that you liked, they would sell it to you so i started um, buying a lot of this stuff but but honestly thinking back and when i went in to start this video i i i'm always trying to reverse engineer like where I got my ideas from because I'm genuinely not really sure I can kind of pinpoint some stuff more definitively but but I've been I've, I've been obsessed with this black white and gray thing really my whole life and, and that definitely comes from just being a fan of um, photography and stuff like that as a kid you know like album covers that my dad had and stuff like that I would see these and I, lo I love color too to be clear but um you know, as a kid, you, you know that markers aren't going to get photographic color. I, mean, I didn't have Photoshop when I was a kid. So um, the black and white seemed more doable. Um, but, yeah, I've always been obsessed with this this gray quality, like line work and gray. <laughs> it really goes back far. I actually found some pieces I did when I was a kid yesterday. And, I mean, it's really obvious that it's my work. Um, and if you follow me on Instagram, you can see a fantasy piece that I did as a little kid. It looks just like my stuff now. It's just more, you know, like looks more like a kid drew, but all the black, the detail, um, the, the subject matter. But yeah, so so I, I this is this has been requested more than once. I've never done Blade of the Mortal on my channel, and uh, it's long overdue that we do. And it's actually going to be really really helpful for me because I'm laying out the rest of um, Blaster Kid right now. The script is fully written and has been for a long time, but I had never laid out the final um, half of the book. So as I go into it, stuff like this actually is really, really valuable for me to um, just see level of detail, amount of panels, the way that the camera moves around the, the pages and stuff like that. Uh, and all of these things really, really help you um, have ideas in your mental uh, toolbox. These are all hand-picked scans for me. They, they will go a little bit out of order, but I kind of looked at all the thumbnails and picked pieces that I thought just... You can kind of tell, like, good composition and dynamic stuff will even read at this size. Like, I can look at something like this and tell you if it was laid out well. I can tell you if there's a good balance of value and also how dynamic it is. I mean, there's an abstract read that you get that really, really... Um, stays in the piece once it's big so i i generally judge art um from, from kind of three distances if, if one of the thing is is i'm really picky on social media too like like instagram is a for instance um uh and i hate to draw this way so so it's it's not always a concern but I know what reads better on Instagram in terms of a design, and I know pieces that won't, and and, and I, I've just seen it over years, and so sometimes I'll draw a piece, and in person it looks great, and I and I already know, I'm like, man, this, does, this won't read well online, it's not going to have the impact that it would in a comic book, it's not going to have the impact that it would if you see the piece in person, but sometimes you have to do it, but other times, you know, you want that knockout punch sort of um, vibe. 
but uh, composition and the amount of black and framing that you use will definitely help something read clear because there's nothing worse than a really detailed piece of art that isn't clear. You know, you should be able to read it at this size and be able to tell what's going on. To be honest, I mean, it might be a little sketchy in spots, but um, overall, that that's kind of what you're shooting for. But man, this is nice. His stuff is actually more influential than I would have imagined. Coming back and revisiting it right now, I'm actually seeing like little things that remind me of stuff that kind of happened parallel to this and after. So it's kind of cool to see. God, it's so good. I'm under the impression that this is all inked. The line is so chaotic at times you would almost think that it was still like um, drawn. These these look like ink lines to be clear, but it's it's hard using um, a crow quill to get this sketchy line. So, oh, I did want to ask too for people that are hardcore into this stuff. One, do you know if the screen tones on this book? Would you believe that they are they're actually on the originals, or do you think it was done digitally? And then two, do you know what pen? Um, is used to ink these types of lines. I'd be curious of both accounts because I was looking into screen tone. See, this looks like real screen tone to me um, and not, not some clip studio, um, you know, drop in. I, but I was looking at deleter stuff today online before I started this video. It's like 11 to $13 a sheet. And I'm just like, Oh my God, that would be expensive. So if you have a lowdown on where to get it for the best price, uh, let me know because I'm I might use a little tiny bit of screen tone on some of my pages not not to forego rendering but um, I do want a little bit of gray here and there um, and I want to do it with screen tone not wash it just looks cool I mean it's the the thing is is I mean this might be an extreme example but there's a difference between this and this and there's a storytelling reason that it's done and these lines on the shirt are so cool Yeah, you can always learn from looking at these masters. Look at this page. So good. Panel count is important on this, too. I I'm I need to keep that in mind because this is only a four-panel page. And, man, it reads just so clear. So good. Uh, this is so awesome. Wow. Damn. Woo. <laughs> Look at that. That is so cool. One well, scene, here's the deal. Like, like, although this is a pretty dotty pattern that he used, um, the, there's ones that are the, the dots are smaller, but you can see that these are fairly large dots. And they kind of read as large dots, honestly, like even pulled out far. But like for me, like I could render a piece like this with like line work, but it would look too busy. There's there's too many different objects that are sitting at different different um, placements in the depth of field, I guess you'd call it, and and although I don't really have a problem with rendering it, it just doesn't look cool. That's the thing. Someone yesterday was saying that uh, Frazetta and Barry Windsor Smith tend to avoid feet uh, when they draw. The reason that that is is not because they can't draw feet. Both guys could draw feet, no problem. It doesn't look as good. Sometimes when you draw characters in action or you've got a moment going and you literally draw out like both feet on the ground, both hands very clearly holding a weapon, the you know everything is so concise it really starts to lose the impact for the reader and so although there are examples of artists that do try to duck out drawing things like feet that's probably not why Barry Windsor Smith and Frazetta do it in fact I know it's not because I've done it you draw stuff oops sorry <laughs> <laughs> you draw stuff and you just go okay that's that just doesn't look cool you know it's it's like like if he drew although you can kind of see the feet here if he literally drew the feet on the ground it starts to look almost unprofessional to be honest at times um because it you're over explaining something that, that you would never ever notice in real life it would uh, someone's walking you, like the clarity isn't there like that so I don't like to get in debates and comment sections about it, but I'll at least follow up in a video and, and give a point of view that you can consider. I'm not saying that it's right and that it covers every scenario, but 
it's food for thought at the very least. The shit's tough to do. He did it with white, but man, I've done stuff like this where you draw around it and it's a freaking nightmare. <laughs> White's the best call, to be honest. If you have infinite amount of time and you want to spend, you know, a full day doing this and drawing like um, in reverse, meaning that you draw black and have the white you draw around the white I mean you could do it but it'd be very very time consuming not not your best use of time this is beautiful again the the gray really creates a beautiful beautiful uh, mood and atmosphere here that rendering and putting line work on all of this stuff to get this gray just would never accomplish and it would never look as good i'm not a big fan though of how dotty this this is though i do actually wish that the dots were a little bit smaller because it reads really dotty this is my own my own aesthetic on it but it looks good at this size i'd have to see it um in the comic like in front of me today to judge but um yeah i don't like it too intrusive where it looks too dotty But, you know, different people have different opinions on that. I tend to like, oh, man, that's a really great drawing. Jeez. That just looks so good. Man. What a great page. I thought this was pretty cool. God damn. It's amazing how sketchy his stuff is. So I opened up about 42 files about. <laughs> I didn't want the video to go too long, but I also didn't want it to be too short. This looks great, too. Man, this is some kick-ass stuff. But yeah, uh, and as always, please, please, please recommend stuff in the comments section. I've actually been pulling a lot of the um, newest videos that I've been doing from the comments section. Uh, and uh, I have so many things on deck. Um, sometimes, you know, I it, it, it's always intimidating to me if I know nothing about the artist and nothing about the book to do a video because I don't want to be disrespectful to people that are fans of it I mean but you know I obviously I would be honest and just to say hey this is the first time that I'm seeing this I don't know anything about it but um it still makes shooting a 20 minute video and having some kind of commentary about it a little difficult you feel a little stupid oh man this stuff is so good God, I'm I'm working on um, the Blaster Kid final. I'm finalizing the logos for the book and stuff like that right now, and uh, it's pretty exciting. So I'm going to spend about three hours uh, working on that, and then I'm working on a Halloween piece, and then I'm also working on um, the the book. So it's going to be a fun day, busy day, but it'll it'll be it'll be fun. And thank you for all your help. A lot of people have been direct messaging me and offering me help and support and stuff like that going into this because I'm kind of doing it on my own and uh, it's intimidating, you know. Eric Canetti is helping out and I have some other friends. Um, but uh, yeah, anyone, if you have any insight on crowdfunding and that kind of stuff, definitely let me know. It'll, it'll help out. Make sure to follow me on Instagram or uh, Facebook. I don't do Twitter as much. I really should start tweeting a little bit. Um, because it can't hurt, you know. Some people maybe prefer Twitter from other things. This is nice. So. Oh, man, that's cool. Man, he really gets some good action. Two-panel page. That's That's a sweet ride right there. But also it leaves you very exposed. I mean, he 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 actually like was smart. He's just got two figures and a little bit of an indication of kind of ground, like a ground plane, I guess, and and then a sky, and then this. There's really not anything more to. <laughs> so cool. Oh man. God, it's so cool looking, man. Well, see, and here's an example, too. Okay, like these figures crouch like this. 
crouch figures can be pretty hard to do and the thing is is there's a lot that goes on with a figure when it crouches there's a lot of wrinkles and folds and overlapping stuff and stuff that's tucked under and, and whatnot and and really ultimately what it is is it's a gesture that that a person when you look at it in a drawing takes in and as long as the all the key elements are visible a literal interpretation of it where I could clearly see his foot planted here I could clearly see his calf and lower part of his leg to his ankle it, none of it is there you can kind of see a suggestion of his back foot but but that was a big hurdle for me a couple of years ago as I would try to do crouch poses and I would take all my anatomy that I knew and all the drawing ideas that I had and I would try to like foreshorten the figure and I was like okay where would the abdomen be where would this be where would that be and you start to realize is is like like when you accumulate more info on it that it, it's like it's really more the gist of it some people will draw it very literally there's really good artists that will draw it very very clear I and mean, you could definitely do it but um can also slow down a drawing so anyway again just food for thought give it a shot because like most of the best pencilers that i've ever seen in person professional pencilers when they lay out their pages they're more scribbles of of space and and the gesture than than um like they don't build it up with like big clunky shapes it's it's more of a um it's more of a doodle of the idea and as long as they 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 like the silhouette and i think the overall vibe of it if you can fill in the blanks enough then you've you've got a drawing that will be successful This is really good. This is nice too. I'm actually going to do a tutorial on f this kind of thing for Patreon this month because um, I, I really have never I've never had a circumstance where I've had to draw capes or um, dresses and stuff like that billowing. So uh, I want to actually um, pursue it a little bit. So that'll be fun. I've done I've done like ribbony stuff, but not um, I don't know whatever you call it like a dress or like long flock <laughs> or cape I don't, I don't know if I've ever drawn him with a cape super cool he gets some really nice gestures with this girl I've noticed that man this, <laughs> this is so badass Damn. That is crazy. He's got, like, this grass is wild. I I respect the fact that he can block it in like this with these just more squiggly shapes. It's efficient. Ah, oh, it's nice. Love the crop on this panel. So this is one, two, three, four, five... It's really interesting. American Comics kind of has a variety. You can have the four to six panel pages. You can have people that have, I mean, obviously people that work in American Comics are from all over the world, but um, uh, European graphic novel sensibilities is generally p more panel heavy. And then this book, at, at the very least, seems to sit around three to five panels. I don't think I've seen too many six panel pages. Oh, that's nice. Really, really cool pants. So that's interesting. Is this like another pattern? Yeah, I guess it is. So he used like a few different screen tones on this piece. This guy's obviously got a large budget. <laughs> Just spent forty dollars on screen tones for one page. I mean, obviously there'd be some left over, but oh man, it's nice. These panels are really cool. Nice lettering. I like that. That's really good. Very little dialogue in this book too. To be honest, I didn't really realize that or remember it. Oh, this is a great shot. That's cool. 
This dude has got this style down. Man. Oh, man. Look at that. That is really cool. It's, it's interesting because some of this stuff is reminding me a little of like Dino Battaglia and, and um, uh, Mick, Mick, Michaluzzi. Some of the like European stuff that I have. I noticed it before. I didn't want to sidebar too hard on um, like visual things that I'm connecting with it. But I noticed that earlier. I was going to say it looks like he might be influenced by a little bit of European art. But it, it's pen and ink is, you know, there's only so many ways it's going to read anyway. Again, really, really nice. God damn, this freaking guy is good. Yeah, he's got a lot of cloth going on in here. It's cloth heavy. Oh, really cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you know, see, and I kind of remember this. I remember when I would buy the books that there was definitely times where this felt like it overwhelmed the drawings just a little bit. Some of the screen tone choices are like a little, a little dark. Seeing this is bringing back that recollection. It's not a deal breaker for me by any means. Oh man, this lettering is cool. <laughs> That's so badass. Really cool. Ooh, this was a good video. This dude can draw. Damn, powerful. Really interesting weapon. Well, I would definitely revisit this guy's stuff. If you have a particular favorite book um, of the series, let me know. Um, and I'd be more than happy to return to this um, again. Because this was really fun to see. And it's, I, like I said, I, I, there's a small hunch I have that th this this may have planted some seeds that have grown in different ways in my own artistic garden. Because this would have been right around the time that I was being, I was very impressionable, you know, and just kind of like, discovering comics that's oh, really cool this is all nice all right Ooh, look at that good 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 oh man it's nice this is making me think of um ninja scroll although it's not exactly the same but man if you're a certain age and you discovered Ninja Scroll, or if you've seen it, I don't know how well it would hold up now, but man, there were some great scenes in that movie. It's, a, it's an anime, but oh man, it's so good. So iconic. And that had a big impact on me too, honestly. Ninja Scroll, memories. Um, Pat Labor. I, I actually have some of the VHS tapes in here. They're in a weird corner just sort of sitting. I haven't looked at them in years, but I know that I've got like a small batch of um, my anime VHS tapes. <laughs> this is funny, but this is how weird I am. I would go to um, Tower Video and I would rent... I think you could rent five or seven movies at a time. So I they had a pretty big anime library, and it was when I was working for Wildstorm. And uh, I would go down there, I'd rent as many anime as I could. I mean, over a period of a year, I probably rented just about every one that they had. But I would work to them, and I literally would, like, they'd all be in Japanese, and I couldn't, I was working, so I wasn't even watching them, and I would just listen to them. I mean, I would glance up occasionally, but but yeah, it was kind of funny. But I'm like, I, I even at the time when I was doing it, I thought it was pretty funny because it was like the comfort of having them and knowing that I could sort of like see some cool stuff if I did glance up made it worthwhile. But I would say ninety, you know, like ninety two percent of the time, I was just listening to Japanese people talking and not understanding a word of it. I always wondered too if like I I don't I think it would be impossible to pick up a language that way, but. It's like, am I learning anything from this? I don't know. I don't think so. This is really cool. Ah, this is such a great pose. Ah, man. Man, that is nice. That gesture is great. The way he's standing there is really badass. It feels almost photo referenced. It's so naturalistic. It may be, but um, like, like from a movie or something like that. But boy, it's good. 
It may not be, to be clear, but oops. oh man, it's not great. Man, art is so fun and drawing is so fun. It's so rewarding. I'm building up a decent body of work here over the last couple of months. It's funny because I've done so many pieces now, I can't even remember them all. Like if I try to think of everything I've done, and the I have like 10 pieces like going at once right now too. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, God, by next year at this time, I'll have so much art. Oh my God, it'll be crazy. It'll be really nice, nice feeling of accomplishment. That's the cool thing too. Once you start producing on a regular basis, you don't live and die by like one piece. That's how I kind of used to feel where it was like I'd power up and like do one drawing. And then if it sort of like was like got a mediocre response, you were just like, ah, oh. now I'm just like, whatever. I just want my batting average like high. You know, if I get up to bat 10 times, if I can hit a few home runs, then have a few that aren't as like popular, that's fine. It's, you know, they uh, pieces of art always find their place and there's always someone that is like that's their favorite for whatever reasons so you just got to try your best but all right you guys have a great day thank you so much for the recommendation on that that was really really fun to see and um like i said i'm i always read the comments i try to reply to everyone i'm always amazed when someone's got a small youtube channel and they get like two replies and they don't take the time to reply I mean, I try to I try to reply to everyone on Instagram. If the app loaded better, I'd be able to really do it well, but it doesn't seem to update, and so it gets really, really confusing when you have a lot of comments coming in. But, um, you know, I really do try to cover my social media pretty hard in terms of replying to people, um, you know, because I really do appreciate the support. So as long as I can do it, I'll do it, but it is very time-consuming. So, all right, you guys have a great day. I will talk to you tomorrow. I'm going to try to do a video every day this week. So, um, you know, as we move into the Blaster campaign, it's very, very important that I'm here with you guys all the time. And um, I'll be doing live streams where I draw or ink and that kind of stuff, too, as, as I work on the book. So um, it'll be fun. I, those videos probably won't be super long, but um, I, will, I will try to set up to be able to do that. So, all right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.